Volume 3, Dreamer, please. Hi guys, welcome back to Volume 3 of the Beginner's Guide series where we'll be covering all the currencies in the game and how you can spend them in 7 nights. To keep things simple, I will talk about 3 things for each currency. What is it used for? how to get them and how you can spend them wisely. I will start with a very overlooked currency and that is Honor. Honor is used for buying keys and also summoning heroes. Getting Honor daily is very easy. By sending Honor, you will get one Honor for each friend you send to and you will receive two Honor when they send it to you. So if you have 100 active friends, you can get 300 Honor in a day. That is why you should get rid of inactive friends regularly. Other sources include fighting arena, from quests, as well as guild war reward chests. You can only get up to 1000 honor, so once you are near that cap, you need to start spending honor in the key shop where you can use 100 honor to buy 10 keys. This is a very important daily purchase you should do in order to have more keys. Keys are basically your stamina for the game. You need keys for clearing adventure, raids, special dungeons, but largely for farming in adventure. There are a few ways to get keys. Keys regenerate on their own every 10 minutes, but that's pretty slow. So as mentioned earlier, you can go to the key shop and use honor and guild coins to get keys. You can also use rubies to get keys and disclaimer alert. As long as you have a good inflow of fodder, you will still eventually profit even after spending rubies. So it definitely isn't ridiculous. You can also get 60 keys from unknown area by spending at least 50 minutes in the game. Guild check-ins also give you keys depending on how many members have checked in. You can easily get a whopping 200 keys just from ad playing and I think this is a very very easy way to get keys. Remember this, the more keys you have, the more rubies you can get because you won't have to spend rubies to sustain your farming while on auto farming. So all your keys will be converted to proper ruby earnings. Which then leads me to talk about rubies, one of the most important currencies in the game. Rubies are primarily used for gacha, which is the summoning of heroes, pets and equipment. They are also used to buy keys, do repeated castle rush runs, buy costumes and for polishing of mythical awakened items. The main source of rubies is via farming. Each fodder after leveling from 1 to 40 gives you 3 rubies, so having a lot of fodder and keys will make you rich. You can also earn rubies from daily quests and weekly arena. Guild War and Guild Dungeon season rewards also give you rubies depending on your guild's rank at the end. Not forgetting the Adventure Quest too, which gives you rubies when you have fought a certain number of monsters. Hence, I will conclude by saying ruby earning is all about time and effort. My personal advice is never feel poor. As a new or returning player, it's always ideal to have about 3000 rubies on hand because you never know when you may need them. Another super important currency you cannot lack is gold. Gold has become one of the most important currency in the game. It is used for unequipping items, building up your formation, how up rank up transcend awaken mythical awaken all heroes items and pets, upgrade all limit break traits, unlock hero exclusive items, summoning heroes in special hero chessboard and also used for synthesis. So how can you get a lot of gold? The main sources of gold would be to farm in 820 on hot time and to sell duplicate 6 star special heroes for 1 million gold. Guild Raid, Guild Dungeon and Growth Dungeon are the 3 other main modes that give you huge quantities of gold but of course will require you to kill bosses. While gold is concurrently required in many areas, for a new and returning player, building your formation is one of the most urgent and necessary for your progress along with building your PvE DPSs. You may also encounter gold ores of varying tiers which are simply additional gold sources. They are found in Adventure Drops in World 8 and Guild Dungeon Rewards. You need to make room in your inventory for them and sell them off quickly to get the gold value they are worth. Another very premium and elusive currency is Topaz. It is mainly used for changing special traits, shopping in the Topaz shop, resetting soul skills, refusing of new 6 star heroes and for buying costumes. Topaz is not the easiest currency to farm for because one of the main methods of getting Topaz is by transcending heroes. The easiest way would be to use Finas to transcend normal heroes to a high level to get a lot of Topaz but Finas are rare too. A more stable source of Topaz would be the Arena Weekly Rewards and Guild War and Guild Dungeon Season Rewards. You can also get Topaz by luck from Lucky Roulette Daily. 
The Topaz shop is filled with many amazing items and resources. If you are just starting to build your PvE team, PvE pets like Kale are some of the better buys from the Topaz shop. Mythical Awakened Stones are also one of the best purchases here but they do cost quite a bit. There are also various premium accessories available here, but I will strongly urge you not to bankrupt yourself on Topaz otherwise you will have a very difficult time adjusting to new methods and new PvE enemies because you cannot change traits efficiently. Always have at least 300 to 400 on hand. With those main currencies covered, I want to talk about all the hero building related currencies. The first are soul essences. These are required to upgrade your basic and special traits. You need a total of 8,700 soul essence to fully upgrade a special trait from level 1 to 10. And these are only obtained by selling layers who give you 5,000 soul essence when sold and by selling heroes, especially special heroes. Rarer tier gold frame special heroes such as 7 knights, dark knights, 4 lots, 4 lots of all hidden masters and magic academy heroes give a lot more soul essence than blue frame ones such as knight crow Pentagon, Revolutionaries and Terra Confederation. This comes in very handy when you have duplicate copies of special heroes. A recommended tip is to try ranking up your special hero to 6 star before selling them as this will give more soul essence along with gold as well. As soul essences are rare in the beginning, make sure you upgrade the limit break traits of your PvE DPS, Velika and Shane first. Soul essences are not to be confused with soul shards. Soul shards are used to upgrade your soul skills in the Fighter Soul skill book. I have made an updated guide about Fighter Soul with recommendations of what to upgrade and how it works so you can check it out from the link above. Soul shards are only available from Adventure Drops and Arena Weekly Rewards. Only maps with bosses will drop soul shards so this will include 4, 5 and 6, 10, 8, 20 and 13, 5. Activating boost mode will increase the drop rate for soul shards so my best recommendation for you is to use boost mode only in 610 to prevent excessive key use. For 100 boost mode runs, you can easily get about 110 to 130 soul shards per day. You can only farm 1000 soul shards per week and this is achievable. Next will be your material heroes. In this giant category, you have your rice cakes, power up crystals, elements, phenas, and layers. So let's start with rice cakes and power up crystals, which are both obtained from daily quests. Rice cakes can trigger a chance for super power up in a regular power up where you use half the resources needed to make a hero plus 5. There will be no super power up chance for awakening and mythical awakening power up. The higher the rank of the rice cake, the higher the chance of the super power up. So please use only one rice cake per power up because using two or more rice cakes don't really boost the chance and they end up being wasted. Power up crystals are basically additional fodder which range from 4 star to 6 star used to power up other heroes. Even 4 star ones can be used in mythical power up but the boost is way too little. Also you cannot use these crystals for fusions. Elements are another important resource to have on hand because without them you cannot rank up your heroes and there will be no progression. You can use several lower rank elements to rank up your heroes at a cost of more gold of course. Elements are gotten from Grove Dungeon, Adventure Drops, Synthesis, Guild Market and Castle Rush Shop. You can simply use Bulk Rank Up which I talked about in Volume 1 to easily combine elements of lower rank to get higher rank ones which can be leveled up again to get rubies. Lastly, for hero building, you cannot ignore Phenas and Layers. Phenas can help give you access to more Topaz while Layers when sold gives you more soul essences. Phenas are used to transcend normal heroes so each transcendence will reward you with Topaz. Phenas and Layers can be obtained from checking into the game, monthly quest completions as well as the guild shop. The next 7 materials or currencies I will talk about are equipment related. The first are the infamous power up stones. I will go through with you guys in detail about item upgrading in volume 5 but for now just know that for any upgrading of weapon and armor, you will need these stones. They are also needed in the upgrading of substats from mythical awakened items via a process called polishing. Honestly, the most ideal way to get them is by farming in item rate for a good amount of items and selling all the items which you don't need. They are also obtainable from Siege Defense, Topaz Shop, Checking In, Weekly Quest and the Lucky Roulette. The indirect way to get power up stones is to sell Asgard ores. There are 4 tiers of Asgard ores, the basic one, the rare Asgard ore, the awakened Asgard ore and the awakened rare Asgard ore. These are actual items that will take up inventory space. Their only purpose is to be sold for power up stones with the awakened rare Asgard ore giving you 1000 stones. 
You can obtain them from unknown area as well as item growth dungeon, hence it is important to be able to clear nightmare difficulty for a growth dungeon as soon as possible in the game. You will also get awakened Asgard Ors from Siege Defense which sell for much lesser power up stones. The second are Mythical Awakened Stones. They look really similar to Power Up Stones but are blue in colour. These are used to Mythical Awakened items which are your weapons and armour. You will need 500 of these stones to Mythical Awaken one item and you can get them from Daily Quest, Topaz Shop, Checking In and the Lucky Roulette. There is another way to get Mythical Awaken stones and that involves selling Celestial Ores. Celestial Ores are items which take up inventory space as well and they are obtained from item rate level 7 as well as special item gacha. Of course I would recommend you to just auto farm item rate level 7 because the drop rate for these ores are decent. If you can farm for an hour, you should definitely get at least 1 to 2. Selling each ore will give you 50 mythical awakened stones, so you will only need to sell 10 to be able to awaken an item. So what about jewels and accessories? For jewels, moonlit ores and awakened moonlit ores are materials which you can use for powering up jewels. They are not super common but can mainly be gotten from Siege Defense, Jewel Raid Loot, Guild Raid Shop, Topaz Shop as well as Guild War and Guild Dungeon Rewards. You will need 5 Moonlit Ores to fully power up a 6 star jewel to plus 5 and likewise for Awakened Moonlit Ores required for Awakened Jewels. Take note the use of Moonlit Ores is not restricted to only 6 star jewels. You can also use them to power up lower rank jewels if you like. Another currency related to jewels are Light Crystals. The Light Crystal is used for changing the main stat of Awakened plus 5 jewels which also means changing the colour of the Awakened jewel. So if you need a red jewel for more attack, but you only have a green one for HP, the Light Crystal will be needed to make this conversion. Light Crystals are available in your Topaz shop and are dropped in World 13 stages only after you have hit the weekly Soul Shards farming cap. For accessories, there is an item which can be used in upgrading accessory substats and these are substat stones. There are 4 different types of substat stones, each offering varying levels of success rate possibility. These are extremely rare and till now can only be obtained by luck via the lucky roulette. Also, if you do happen to get them, I would strongly recommend only using them on level 4 accessories due to the very low success rate of becoming level 5. The substat stone will make a much bigger difference here as compared to lower level accessories. There are also materials and currencies which are pet related. The first will be the pet essence. Pet essence is used to upgrade an awakened pet's passive buffs from level 1 to 10. As the upgrade success mechanism is by chance, you will definitely need to store up a lot of pet essence. This is gotten by selling pets. Special pets give 25 times more pet essence than normal pets, so if you get duplicate copies of special pets, just sell them. There is no need to rank them up before selling. There is also a unique pet called Sets which gives 2000 pet essence when sold. Otherwise, you could use pet tickets, namely the gold and silver ticket to improve your chances of pet cheer upgrades. A gold ticket increases the success rate by 20% while the silver ticket increases the success rate by 10%. There is no known way to obtain these tickets except via events to date. From this point, we will start venturing into shopping currencies. So the first shopping currency is the Castle Rush Credit. The amount of Castle Rush credits you get depends on the score you achieve in Castle Rush. What is recommended to be bought from the Castle Rush shop would be the 2 to 6 star veteran hero ticket as well as the 3 star and 4 star element tickets and the 3 star element selector depending on your preference. These are the most worthwhile in my opinion, especially the veteran hero ticket because it is a super cheap source of fodder to sustain your farming and it essentially means that you are using 5 Castle Rush credits to get 3 rubies. However, with mythical power up requiring 6 star heroes, some of you may be desperate and want to get the 6 star hero ticket instead. Now this is very costly and it can deplete your castle rush credits very quickly. So do keep this in mind, exercise with caution in case you may suddenly need elements and extra fodder for your farming. Guild coins are obtained from guild wall. The amount of guild coins you have will be the exact amount your guild has taken from the enemy guild each guild wall. So even if you lost all your guild wall matches, you can still get guild wall coins. I would strongly prioritize guild coins on buying keys because more keys means more rubies and you can never complain about having too many keys. Phoenix and Leas are also available here and this is the only source to get them but they can be costly. Then we have guild raid points which are obviously only gotten by defeating guild raid bosses. 
These are to be spent in the guild rate shop and I would suggest prioritizing your guild rate points first on PvE revolutionary jewels. These jewels have very good substats suitable for a variety of contacts in PvE which we will go through again later in detail in volume 5 and they will highly benefit you for PvE modes like guild dungeon and your raid progress. If you feel that you want to get a Galidus, Isabella accessory or Celestial accessory with 1500 or 3000 guild rate points respectively, you could also do that but only after you have the key PvE jewels because these accessories will not be super beneficial for new and returning players. So many currencies in the game but you finally know how to get and use all of them now. I hope you found this video useful and if you did, be sure to give this video a like, drop a comment and subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for volume 4 where we will cover the game's mechanics. Thank you so much and see you!